The Tom Woods Show, episode 748. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Folks, if you enjoy the smackdowns of the bad guys here on the show, then you will really enjoy my book, Real Descent, which I think is some of the best stuff I've ever done. It's a fat book, and it's only four smackers on Kindle. Plus, you can get the audiobook version for free with me reading it. Check out the details at realdescent.com. Hello, everybody. Tom Woods here. You know, I do, I haven't done this in an awful long time, but I do occasionally release a so-called bonus episode, an episode in addition to the regular five episodes a week, when it's an episode that strays a little bit from the normal subject matter of the show. So I've had episodes on everything ranging from progressive rock to the Catholic Church and the politics of the church, all the way to online entrepreneurship and no doubt other topics. And I do want to revisit progressive rock. That's coming up again soon. The only issue is I have to listen to some stuff to get up to speed in order to keep keep up with Brad Berzer when he comes back on to talk about that. So that's my fault. I will eventually get to that. And I do have some business folks I'm going to be sprinkling into bonus episodes from time to time. So this one could easily have been a bonus episode. But look, I'm, I'm going to the Mises Institute event in Cambridge, Massachusetts this weekend. And then a week after that, I'm going on the Contra Cruise for a week. So it's a miracle I'm able to do five episodes at all. So this one, thanks to my crazy schedule, gets upgraded to a regular standard Monday through Friday Tom Wood Show episode. And our guest today is James Newcomb. And not too long ago, I talked to a conscientious objector who is a member of my Supporting Listeners program. So I get to know some of these folks uh, through supportinglisteners.com because we have a, a private Facebook group. And it turns out James is also a, a conscientious objector, but that's not the primary reason I'm, I'm having him on, although I think that's an interesting bit of information about him that you will find interesting as well. But also I'm interested in what he's been up to since leaving the military. This is a consistent, regular show listener, uh, James is, and he is trying his hand at making a living online. Uh, he's trying, trying his hand at becoming an entrepreneur while being a musician. So in fact, he is planning, he has a blog called Musicpreneur, and he's planning a podcast, Musicpreneur. Very interesting, how to help independent musicians figure out how to make a go of this in this world of the internet. He's also the founder and director of a podcast called Trumpet Dynamics, and I'll be linking to both of these things at tomwoods.com slash 748. So I thought this might be an interesting discussion because after all, we all believe in entrepreneurship, those of us who listen to this show. And frankly, I personally think that given that there is the possibility of, there's always a possibility with the Fed around of recession and bad economic news, what could be bad about trying to build up an outside income stream or two or three or four of them? Like, what could be bad about that? We would all want to do that. So let's, let's give it a try. James, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been interested in what you've been doing for quite a while, and I listened to the interview you did with the guy who's known as The Real Brian mm -hmm. on the Podcaster's Paradise podcast, which I've also been on, and I love him as an interviewer. I mean, he just, he's genuinely enthusiastic about what each guest is doing. He's thrilled to hear about what James Newcomb is up to, yeah. as am I, and not only because you're a, a listener of this show and a and supporting listener at that, but just because I, I love stories like this, and I love to see how people people carve out their niches and and uh, and make a make a go of things. You're a musician and so that's where you've gone. And by the way, before we even get started, since I'm not a musician but I have strong <laughs> opinions on music, anytime a musician validates my musical opinions, it makes me feel smart. <laughs> so I'm glad that you've appreciated some of my not all listeners appreciate them, but you've appreciated some of my musical recommendations over the years. So I'm well, grateful for that. Yeah, that's too bad that people can't uh, see the great. You know, if Igor Stravinsky or like Mozart or Bach were alive today, I think that people like that would be in the prog rock scene. There you go. There you go. That's you know what all, I mean? That's all I'm trying to say here. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. I want to talk about what what you do. Now, you've changed up what you've been doing Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, but it's got the same basic trajectory. You are a musician, and you're primarily a trumpet player. That's correct. And you have, as of the moment, you have two podcasts that you're doing. And the idea of these is to spread musical education, but also to earn a, a living. And a lot of people say that can't be done, and oh, it's a scam to say you can earn money online. Mm-hmm. You know, and these are peeps, basically people who haven't bothered to try, <laughs> but they just know it can't be done. So right. I'm interested in, in, in particular, you have a, tr- tell us about the Trumpet Podcast. This is a highly specialized, very niche area, yeah. but therefore, James Newcomb can become the guy in it. Right. Well, my podcasting career started, uh, I guess I got interested in, in it about two years ago when John Lee Dumas came on your show. And at that time, your show was the only podcast that I really listened to. I wasn't really interested in anything else, uh, business or economics otherwise. But Tom Woods was the guy for me. And uh, John came on and he <clears throat> was explaining how much he was earning with his podcasting business, and I thought, man, you know, you know how much he earns. It's yeah, significant. I would be happy with the tiniest <laughs> slice of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, the fact that he is making that kind of money means that there's money to be made. And I might not make what he's making. I mean, I, I, I might not get to that level, but the fact that he is making it happen shows that it can be that it can be done. And so I joined Podcasters Paradise, um, like you did, shortly after that. My first podcast was called Outside the Music Box, and that went okay. Uh, But the problem with Outside the Music Box was, one, I was still active duty in the Army, and so I had a very limited amount of time that I could dedicate to it. Two, I was stationed in Korea at the time, and so 90% of my guests were in the U.S., so there was a constant battle with scheduling. I, I... I literally did interviews at 4 o'clock in the morning just to accommodate guests and 10 o'clock at night, and it was just a big headache. Uh, but really the big problem with Outside the Music Box was I just didn't uh, take the time to really niche down. I, I, it was just a little too broad of a topic. I was trying to get people to think about how music is always in our lives. It's how you can just walk outside and listen to the birds sing and there's music. And it, ultimately it was just a little bit too broad to really nail down uh, a core audience. And so I decided to re-rip a little bit, and I started another podcast called Trumpet Dynamics, and that's going, it's actually going really well, all things considered. I started out as once a week, and it's been educational for me. Like, I've played trumpet for 32 years now, and I can't tell you how much I have learned just doing this podcast. And A thing that I like to say to people is if you want to get free mentorship or free lessons or free education, start a podcast because you have the opportunity to talk to people who are experts in your niche and they don't want to necessarily just talk to you, but you have an audience and you have uh, a means that they they, they can communicate their message to other people. And I can't tell you, Tom, how much I have learned uh, just just talking to people who will forget who will forget more about trumpet than I'll ever learn. And so it started out as once a week. And um, <clears throat> I don't know if you were following John Lee Dumas. He's, I guess, he's my my go to mentor when it comes to podcasting. Oh yeah, I follow him closely. Yeah. I'm curious to see when he tries things yeah. if they work or they don't work. And even when he sends out emails to his list. Half the time he's promoting an affiliate product that I'm aware of, and I want to see how he promotes it uh-huh. because he's the master. And he's gotten to the point where he's promoting his own products now. And that's really that's really where the money is to be made right there. Yes. Anyway, he had um, his big push was for the Freedom Journal, and he had a Kickstarter campaign. And one of the perks for the Kickstarter campaign was you, you contribute a certain amount, and then you can spend an entire day with him in Puerto Rico. And so I, I just left the military. I had uh, some money and savings, and I thought, man, if I don't take this opportunity now, I might never get this opportunity again. And I paid the money and went out to Puerto Rico. And the result of uh, my time with John was this idea called Musicpreneur. And you said that it's uh, a second podcast. It's actually not quite launched yet. It's going to launch on January 1st of 2017. Oh, okay, okay. I got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's a blog right now, and I'm 
and I write in the blog every day. But the actual podcast won't start until January 1st. Okay, but we'll be directing some traffic over to that blog so that you sure. can you can exploit some of it for when the podcast starts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I also have a free gift if anyone's interested I'll mention later. But um, Of course you do. You were trained by John. Of course you have a free gift. What else would you have? <laughs> and I also have a specialized page just on, on my website just for your listeners. <laughs> oh, okay, good. This was time well spent. I knew that you had somehow been mentored by him. But I didn't know exactly. I didn't know you actually went to Puerto Rico, where he he relocated from San Diego a couple of years ago. Yes, uh, d down there, and I I suppose it was for tax reasons. But he earned so much money, I just can't imagine that would matter. I'd rather live in San Diego, but that's my, that's my own preference. Well, I'm not going to speak on John's behalf, but he was paying a significant amount of taxes, and it went down from his tax burden went down from in the neighborhood of 51 percent to about four percent. Okay, well, now suddenly I want to move to Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, all right, so, so you, you got there and you told him – I mean, I, I, I want to know about how this session went because he's got sure. – I'm going to link to the uh, – people listening to this really need to listen to my episode that I did with him. Yes. I'm going to link to it at tomwoods.com slash 748. You really need to listen to this because this is a guy who for real makes this work and who started – from nothing. And, and in fact, he says his f first few podcast episodes are just embarrassing. He's so bad at it. <laughs> but he just kept going and kept going and kept going and learning and implementing. And man, he is now the go to master. I mean, this is a guy who's earning, just so people understand, he's earning six figures a month from his podcast. So he really does know what he's talking about. All right. So tell me what it was like to spend a day with this guy. Well, he has a certain persona that is um, that he like an on camera persona. And it's very energetic, really just go, 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 go. That's his sort of on-camera persona. In real life, he's very uh, – he, I'd say he's very – he's much more relaxed than he is when he's podcasting or doing a webinar or something. Ah. Um, yeah, I would say that he's, uh, he's more – I guess he's just tame, much more so than his on-camera persona. And, but, and by um, the way, I think that would be a fine way for him to run his different things because I sometimes feel like he's overdoing it. I mean, I, I know he's full of energy and he's a smart and happy guy, but I, I sometimes I think I'd rather just see the real him. But anyway, go ahead. Well, I mean, he's making the bucks, so yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> a, everything I say, there's a huge asterisk next to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I went into the session, you know, very green as an entrepreneur. I just, like I said, I just left the military last December, and really made a full uh, like just decided I'm going to make a go as an entrepreneur with podcasting starting earlier this year. So I'm very green, very new. And John knows that he knows he, he doesn't, he's not going to expect me to be the next, uh, next him right out the gate. Um, I just told him. <clears throat> and the funny thing is I had just left a big trumpet conference in Anaheim, California, and I flew from LA to Puerto Rico and spent the time with him. And the big thing that I noticed with this trumpet conference was they didn't have any focus on entrepreneurship. Uh, they had a bunch of uh, instruction. They had recitals, which are great. I, I, me being a trumpet player, I loved it. But they didn't have any focused, um, dedicated instruction on entrepreneurship. So that that was the big pain point that I saw that I can – that's a way that I can add value to uh, this trumpet niche is entrepreneurship because this is what I do. And this is what I'm learning. I'm mastering it. Every day I get just a little bit better. And that's what I told him, <clears throat> John. I, I said, John, this is, uh, this is where I feel that I can uh, add value, not just to the trumpet world, but to musicians in general who want to make a go of uh, – they want to monetize their musical abilities. This is, this is where I can uh, add value. This is where I can perfect my own skill set and, and really – make a go of it. So uh, the, decision, the decision was made by me with his coaching and his guidance to make a three-day-a-week podcast, and that's what Musicpreneur is going to be starting in January. It's going to be three days a week. The first uh, episode of the week will be a, a full-length interview, like an in-depth interview with a musician who has made it happen, who's making it happen. Uh, the second episode will be uh, a little more, like I call it a technique Tuesday or something like that, and focus on one specific element of entrepreneurship that musicians can uh, implement in their business. And then the third episode will be me going solo 15, 20 minutes or so and just kind of wrapping things up. 
And so after that day with John, I made the decision, I'm going to take this trumpet podcast. I have this audience that I can sort of tinker with. I can experiment with things. And first thing I did was make it a three day a week podcast. And so now I'm going to hit episode 100 in, I think it's December 14th, which, you know, that's, that's a, an achievement, I guess. But um, I guess the result of my time with John was that is the trajectory that I'm going to take my business with podcasting. And once I launch the Musicpreneur podcast, once it's totally in motion, then uh, remains to be seen what's going to happen with the Trumpet podcast. I'm experimenting with ideas as to how to make sort of a open source community, kind of like a Craigslist type of site for trumpet players, or uh, just kind of tinkering with some ideas with that. Well, how many trumpet podcasts are there? Right now, there are three that I know of, one of which was started as a result of listening to my podcast. <laughs> so, um, like I was uh, advertising the uh, free podcast course that John does. And so he listened to that and he started his own podcast. So, but there's three that put out content regularly that I know of. Okay, so that's not that many, but at no. the same time, the trumpet community is not the biggest community in the world. So you, when, but when, when you started your podcast, so that's three, one of them was started because of you, so the, there's a third one. Was that one already there when you got started? Yeah, that one's been around for about two years. Okay, so in other words, there are whole areas they don't have to be gigantic because really all you need is a is a dedicated group of listeners who love what you're doing. That really is – it's not numbers so much. Numbers are nice, but it's finding these people who have something in common and who really like what you're doing that matters. If something like Trumpet, which is something everybody's heard of, can be so wide open that you can be one of the only people doing it, it seems like maybe there's more virgin territory in the podcasting world than I thought. Well – Credibility is currency, you know, like you're not going to make, I'm not going to make a whole lot of money with podcasting about trumpet. I realize that. And you ask any trumpet player, they'll say, yeah, there's not a whole lot of money playing trumpet. And the same is true with having a trumpet podcast. And I realize that, but there is a lot of credibility that I've gained. Like I, I left the military last December and in the trumpet community, I was a total no name. No one knew me. I mean, I mean, I had a couple of friends, but as far as being any type of authority figure? No way. Just a short time later, nine months later, I have this podcast and people know my name and people think of me as, as some something of an authority figure. And that the longer I do it, the more it'll grow. But there is there is a lot to be said for being an authority in one particular niche. And then uh, once you get good at that, then maybe you can expand and focus on something else like I'm doing with the musicpreneur. I had not thought of that, but that is really smart. And plus, you enjoy doing the probably the doing the trumpet podcast. You you get to talk to all kinds of people you wouldn't normally have the opportunity to talk to. And meanwhile, as you say, you're establishing yourself as somebody who knows what he's talking about and as somebody other people have heard of. Of course, yeah, he's got he's got uh, that podcast that everybody listens to. He's got basically a hundred episodes. That's an interesting uh, angle on things. Oh, yeah. And let me add that. Guess who's going to teach a class on entrepreneurship at that trumpet conference next May? Yeah. See, how about that? Yours truly. How about that? Now, that would not have happened otherwise, presumably. Absolutely. That is great. Where do they hold a trumpet conference? Uh, this one is going to be in Pennsylvania, Hershey Park. All right. Good, good, good. <laughs> okay. So, so, so that's great. All right. So meanwhile, though, presumably you have some kind of a day job while you're putting all this, these uh, moving pieces together. You, one would assume so, but um, this is what I've done since I left the Army last December. Oh, wow. Good for you. All yeah. right. That is good. So you are really throwing yourself into it. So a combination of that and my wife is a Pamper Chef consultant. And so uh, I can't say that I'm like rolling in money with my podcasting efforts, but I can say that I'm much further along the lines of uh, monetization than I was when I started nine months ago. And my wife is, uh, she's making it happen. We just relocated to North Carolina from Minnesota. And so, man, it's just a season of change for both of us. But, um, you know, I'm getting my name out there as a, as a musician here in the local area, trying to get some students, trying to get some gigs. And, uh, you know, it's a little precarious right now, but uh, we'll be all, we'll be fine. You know, if, here I am. I'm in Florida, and I'm temporarily experimenting with a. Uh, I have a temporary home office while my 
the new place I'm going to be recording is being built, actually. Mm-hmm. And so whoever does the, 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 the shrub trimming or the, the, the lawn mowing and all that, they've decided to do that right now. So, I mean, you would think that by episode 748, you wouldn't have extraneous noises. I'm not <laughs> sure that's audible, but there's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry. It's, it's just that I'm, I'm, in, I'm in between recording places. Not, not, not much I can do about it. Oh, it sounded like a trumpet player warming up. <laughs> All right. Um, James, let's talk about what music entrepreneurship is. What is it that a musician, what are some things a musician, an independent musician in this day and age needs to know about entrepreneurship? Like your mom sings to you when you're, she sings to you when you're asleep. Uh, it's something that you learn in school. It's, it's just always there. Music is ubiquitous. And so it's kind of a struggle for some musicians to sort of package that and, and make a product, a saleable product, out of something like how can, you, how can you package air? Can you figure out how to do that? And that's kind of the same thing with music. And so what I have come up with or the sort of the solution that I have come up with is that music itself is not the product. That's not how you're going to make money making music. The money is to be made in the experience of music. Like think about your favorite band, like Big Big Train. We both like Big Big Train. And you can um, buy, well, you can listen to the entire album on iTunes for free or uh, for, on YouTube for free. But <clears throat> think of the contrast between that and going to a live show of Big Big Train. And, and that's why you're willing to pay however much it is for a ticket to see Big Big Train. It's about $60, $70 for a ticket. It's the experience. It's not necessarily the music. And the next thing is that musicians are so far behind the curve when it comes to modern entrepreneurship. Um, there's a lot of old timers who say, carry your business cards with you at all times, uh, network, 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 and that's great. But by and large, musicians are just not, they're, they're far behind the curve when it comes to using the internet, uh, using YouTube, building an email list, uh, they're just they're just not aware of the tools that are available. And when it comes right down to it, it's not that much different than what you do, Tom, with like your your biggest uh, drive with all of these free ebooks that you offer is you want people on your email list, right? Right. And it's it's really not that much different from musician or for musicians. So that is the two biggest things that I see that musicians need to understand is that uh, you have to understand that the product of music that you're going to sell isn't your music. It's the experience that you're providing. And the second is to just be aware of the tools that are available to promote yourself and uh, make a name for yourself online. Did you happen to hear the interview I did with Leah McHenry? Yes. In fact, I uh, am a member of her Musician Academy. Okay. Well, how about that? Because yeah, she's <laughs> very much operating along these lines. And, and the impression I get is that she she's talented and she wants to share her music and she i think she navigated and figured it all out herself she saw how other people were doing it and she realized you have to build an email list and i remember there was an i don't remember how long ago it was i did a webinar with lead pages which is the company i use for my landing pages so realdescent.com you know i created that in like 5 minutes with with <laughs> lead pages and bernieiswrong.com it's these basic 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 landing pages that's all you need you want it to be basic you don't want a lot of bells and whistles you want them to just put their email address in get your free giveaway and get on your list but anyway i did this webinar a while ago where i invited some of my listeners i said i'm going to have tim page of of lead pages come on and show you basically how you use landing pages to create an email list because you're going to need this if you're in business or if you're aspiring to be in business. This is going to be a skill you're going to be glad you have. And I actually had some people complaining about this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know that. Wait, well, okay, then don't go, right? <laughs> you know, like, what's the big deal? Right? I, why would you think I'd be? Well, anyway, um, now it turns out next month or, or uh, November, I'm going to be doing an affiliate contest for for Liberty Classroom, and whoever you know the the, the I give fifty percent commissions for people who who uh, sell a Liberty Classroom through their link, and I'm giving away 
cash prizes for the second through 10th place finishers in the contest on top of the 50% commissions. Everybody gets that, but then wow. cash prize. And then I'm giving away a new car for the number one prize. Now, people who built email lists and who, well, let's say, who have libertarian websites and who built email lists are going to be in a much, much stronger position to win that stuff. So, see? If you listen to Woods, you're going to go places, all right? But trust me, I know what you guys need, all right? I'm just here to give it to you. <laughs> well, you're the merchant, and your website is your store. Like, imagine, like, go into Walmart and see, and just look around. See, just observe Walmart. They have uh, down to a science as to where everything is placed, and a website is, it's just like, your first impression, like people walk into your store for the first th the first time. What is their impression? That's just your website, and that's that. that entre uh, online entrepreneurs entrepreneurs need to think that way. And it's funny, just like arranging the items in Walmart, which, as you say, is not random at all. No, it's very scientific. <laughs> Likewise, even things like the the color scheme, the precise wording, things on your landing pages can affect the opt in rate. To, you know, in a non to a non trivial extent, and you want every opt in you can get. So if you really get deep into it, you start experimenting and doing split testing. And so half your audience sees one version of the page, half sees the other. You look at the results and say, okay, this is the one I should go with. In fact, there was even a time when I was going to send out an email and I had two juicy hmm. subject lines. I couldn't tell which one to use, so I sent it out for three hours and split tested it. Half got one, half got the other, and I saw which one opened, got more people to open it up. And one of them, it was, it was like a, it was like a eight percentage point difference. Like it was a big difference. Mm -hmm. So I canceled the second one and I went with the first one. I mean, I love stuff like this. I mean, I, 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 did, I I'm sorry to keep blabbing on, but at my high school reunion last year, I met one of my old sort of acquaintances and it turns out she does social media and advertising and stuff for Procter and Gamble. So she knows all about split testing and all this stuff. And we just talked endlessly because we finally found somebody who gives a darn about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. So this is all this is all good stuff, but I want to you keep mentioning that you used to be in the military. So I do want to talk about that for a minute, if I may. Okay. What were the circumstances there? You left the military. Well that's not. That's sometimes easier said than done. So tell me the why and the how. Hmm. Man, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> I well, did. I, yeah. I was in the military twice. Uh, the first time was in 94 to 98. I was right out of high school. I'm 40 years old now. And the second time was um, 2008 through, uh, like I said, last December. And <clears throat> there's two ways of exiting the military. You can either... Uh, finish out your term of service and like get discharged like everyone else, or you can uh, maybe go the conscientious objector route if you feel like your views are that strong, which I did, and I pursued that. Ultimately, um, it ended with me breaking the rules because I encountered delay after delay after delay. I experienced a lot of indifference, a lot of just blatant incompetence there in Korea, and. Um, it ended with me going on an unauthorized trip uh, to Taiwan from Korea, which apparently is a big deal. And so they, uh, I was reduced in rank and uh, was uh, given a new discharge date. And um, so that's how it ended. It was unfortunate, but um, it was for a good purpose, I guess. When did you enter the military and did you have different views then and how did they change? They were similar, but not as concrete. Like uh, I... For a year, I worked for the John Birch Society, so that gives you an idea of my politics. That was in 2005, I worked for the Birch Society. And in 2008, I went back into the military with some reservations, but not to the point where it's like, I can't wear this uniform, I can't, uh, I can't play my instrument, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to, to do this, I'm contributing to immorality. Over time, uh, just I guess just being more educated, uh, educating myself, uh, being exposed to sites like Lou Rockwell, Mises Institute, uh, that's when my views became more, a little more concrete, a little more crystallized. And uh, in, I guess it was about two years ago today, I, not today, but uh, this time, about two years ago, I put in the paperwork to be discharged as a conscientious objector. And uh, a year later, 
uh, there was no movement. And I honestly, I think just the waiting and the uncertainty just got the best of me. And I just decided, forget it. I'm just going to break a rule and get out of here. What if that hadn't happened? How, how long had you anticipated you'd spend in the military? Were you going to go the whole way, get the retirement package and all that? No, my contract at the time uh, would have expired in May of 2018. So, whew, man, hard to imagine me being in the Army that long. But what can I do? How about I'm going to ask you a personal question. How did family members take this decision? My wife was very opposed to it at first because uh, she has what uh, people call the security gland that men don't really have. But women like to know that things are set in place. And the military does provide at least an illusion of security, knowing that even if you don't get paid, then Congress will, no, they'll, they'll get you back pay. You, you, you sort of have this idea, this, this understanding that you're still going to get paid. No matter, no matter what happens, you're going to have that. So she was very, very much against it from the get-go. But I just reached a point where I was like, sorry, uh, I, I have to do this. This I absolutely cannot contribute to this to this war anymore. Uh, and and even even with something that's a non-combat role like playing an instrument, I'm still sort of rallying the the troops, rallying the public with my music. And it just got to a point where it was totally, it was absolutely incongruent with my own views and my own conscience. Wow, that's hard. That really is hard. And I understand, I totally understand the security point, because, mm -hmm. of course, it's not like that wasn't weighing on your mind to some extent. Oh, of course it was. That is a, of course, that's a major factor. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what could you do in that situation? Man, that's hard, and that, that was not an easy decision you made. So all the more, I hope your, uh, your efforts uh, right now, I mean, I'd really like to talk to you again in the future with sure. Musicpreneur are, are really going to pay off. Now, what's the, people want to visit Musicpreneur, how do they do that? Well, I've created a special page just for listeners of this show. You can go to musicpreneur.com, and it's M-U-S-I-C-P-R-E-N-E-U-R, musicpreneur.com slash woods. And I've got... Uh, <laughs> what else? <laughs> okay. Everything is slash woods. I've got a special <laughs> message and uh, just tailor-made for your audience. Oh, that is going to be great. Well, I'll link to that special page at tomwoods.com slash 748 if people don't remember it. So we'll put that there, and, and anything else you want to send me that would be good to, to put there, I will, I'll gladly add. So I think this counts as the publicity you get for using my Bluehost link. <laughs> I would say, yeah, this is sufficient. I think yeah. I can live with this. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. All right, great talking to you, James. Best of luck. Thanks, Tom. All right, now my hope is that by tomorrow I will be able to tell you the site where you can download my Next free ebook, and it'll be available. It's called Education Without the State. And the, the trouble I'm having is it's a, I've got it as a Word document, and normally I have somebody who does all the work on it. They do the file conversion and all that stuff. But when I try to convert it to a PDF, it sometimes, you know, when I use one of these free online services, sometimes it sort of works. Sometimes it doesn't work at all in the sense that the, the PDF doesn't use the same font that I want. I mean, I want it to be exactly the way my Word file looks, just as a PDF. Or on those services where they do get the font right, then at the end, there's some weird graphic problem. So it looks like I need to hire somebody. And I did hire somebody who thought he was going to make a quick buck by just running it through one of these free online services. Look, man, I already did that. That's why I'm going to you. So I should be able to dig out somebody who's capable of doing this. So I am hopeful that I will be able to say to you, here you go, here's your free ebook. Go enjoy it over the weekend. So let's hope, keep your fingers crossed and I'm gonna be able to make this work and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free and we'll see you next time.